Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking Episode 5 of Season 6 of Arrow, Doppelganger. And this is an episode that I think it's reasonably solid in parts, but just doesn't quite work for me in others. Um, <clears throat> the main thing uh, for me around here is... Well, one, one of the major ones is the whole situation with Laurel. It just sort of feels like they're just... They, like, they really are trying to make us wonder, like, what's going on in her head. And it's just not isn't working. I mean, we see, like, okay, does Laurel maybe want redemption? No, Laurel doesn't want redemption. Laurel is lying. Oh, here, Laurel is now actually maybe kind of wants redemption, but now she's actually secretly working for Dia. It's like, okay, I know you want us to kind of want, keep guessing as to what's happening with this character, but it's getting old. I mean, at first... In the earliest part of this episode, it seemed like, okay, the whole situation with, um, all right, Black Siren has decided to step in here and pretend that she's Earth-1 Laurel Lance. She's uh, perfectly capable of fingering Oliver as the Green Arrow, and Oliver is having to cut a deal with her, as much as he hates it, in order to kind of keep things together. Okay, now that's interesting. But then it kind of just delves into the whole thing of, like, well, maybe Black Siren has some good in her after all. And then by the end of the episode, it's like, no, it seems she's working for Diaz after all. Like, what's... I mean, it should... They're trying to make this intriguing as to what's really going on with her, if she will ever have any sort of real redemption. But it just comes across as just pointless flip-flopping. It's like, man, pick something to do with this character and go in that direction. I mean, you know, which way is this character going to break is a potentially interesting storyline. It's just, you can't keep changing it every, every, like, multiple times during the same episode. I mean, I can understand, like, if she sort of leans one way for a couple episodes, then something bad happens and she flips back the other. But they, they're not really giving all of these shifts time to percolate so that they seem natural and believable. It just feels so incredibly herky-jerky. It's... Yeah. I mean, uh, at least the whole thing of her wanting to be protected from Diana, Dinah, was reasonably well done. And I do like that they did take the time that Dinah would work with Quentin in this situation, given the corruption in the police department. They've definitely got some real serious issues between them, but the Star City PD is something they both value very highly. And for once, Dinah's acting willing to act like a mature adult about the situation, something that she and the rest of the outsiders have not really been doing very well on lately. And it does this episode does a nice job to remind us that, you know, despite their differences, Dinah and Quentin are really far more alike than they are different. And I did like that they they addressed the situation with Laurel's mom. You know, Quentin did put it quite nicely that um, you know, she's been jerked around enough on situations like this, so good. Good on that. Not that I wouldn't mind seeing Alex Kingston again. You know, who doesn't love her? But if you're going to do it, make it a big thing. Uh, let's see. So we do get to see a little bit more of Diaz as a more fleshed out character. We get to see some of the martial arts stuff, which is solid enough. Um... I don't know. Something about him is just a little too over the top for my taste. And when you consider, I mean, it's not as bad as like Damien Dark on Legends of Tomorrow, which is uh, kind of just become utterly ridiculous at this point. And again, utterly ridiculous is sort of Legend of Tomorrow's trademark, I suppose. But it's just sort of like, I just can't take this guy seriously. I mean, I'm not really sure what uh, about the choices the actor is making here. It just, it just, it just, it's just not working for me. It's just not working for me. I can't really put a good finger on why. It's, it's just not. Now it was really great to see Roy again. Uh, this is something uh, I know a lot of people have been wanting for a while. Colton Haynes, um, you know, we've missed the guy. He was a great character. Wonderful to see Roy again. Nice to see him interacting with Thea again. Uh, I mean, you know, this is, like I said, this is something we've been wanting for a while, and it doesn't disappoint. Um, <clears throat> but, I don't know. I just, 
kind of was hoping for something a little bit more. I wanted to see Roy just genuinely do something interesting. And, you know, he doesn't really do anything. He's tied up to a chair and getting beat his butt kicked most of the time during uh, this episode. Although his conversation with Thea at the end uh, was very nicely done. I, that was, I think, really great as um, the real heart of this episode. Uh, I do like also that Oliver was pointing out like perfectly logical things like, you know, hey, Thea, you can't fight all of these cops in this situation and, and get out of there alive, and you'll just get Roy killed in the process. Uh, note, us grabbing Roy like this, this will just get witness tampering added to the charges. It's not going to make the charges against me go away. So, you know, uh, points, points there for, uh, for a little bit of realism. You know, it's kind of funny. It's It occurred to me while I was watching this episode when, like, uh, Thea was up at the vet watching those cops beat up Roy that, man, it's uh, it's too bad that they don't have, like, body cams or something on their uniforms. Um, if Roy's, like, you know, has, his name is turned up in court documents, then people obviously know he's alive. How handy would it be to have some footage of some cops beating the hell out of him to stick up on YouTube? And, um, hmm. I definitely also like the nice moment with uh, Curtis and Zoe. I mean, somebody had to tell her that her dad was in the hospital. And this is a nice way to kind of have Curtis have something to do in an episode where this is really his only appearance. And it again serves to remind us that uh, Curtis is um, a very caring person. And that despite their strong differences in personality, he and, Ray, he and Renee are actually, uh, actually pretty tight. And, um, yeah, guys, I think that covers everything I really had to say about this episode. Oh, yeah, I mean, obviously we're gearing up for um, some stuff with uh, the former members of the League of Assassins uh, next time. Uh, totally looking forward to that, because, you know, it's usually a pretty good time when the League of Assassins turns up. So, guys, um, I'm going to call it here. Uh, as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter, at Who's Your Jedi, and uh, please also join me on uh, Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good one.